good afternoon guys so here this is a video on uh, how to properly stabilize rock um, I've seen this question asked a million times in fact people have asked me a million times uh, so I thought I would do a video and sorry about the camera angle I have my tripod up a little high um, now this method here is sort of universal um, you can do a similar method using a vacuum chamber if you're using cactus juice but of course the process will be slightly different um, from Opticon, but Opticon 224 is a very, very, very old, um, you know, and very well-known uh, stabilizer. So they call it a fracture sealer, and that it does, it works great. Um, now how the traditional way to do it is you would take some of your part A, we'll call this, and you would put it on your slabs, um, you stick them in the oven, so on and so forth. What I like to do is I like to use a vacuum chamber, especially if you have porous rock. Um, these things are absolutely great. The only thing I'm gonna tell you is get a good one. Um, you know, don't buy one of these like cheap ones that you see on, on eBay. Well, you might be able to find a good one on eBay, but, but get yourself a good one. I, this is a five gallon. Um, I went with a bigger one for simply because if I wanna ever stabilize larger rock, I can do it. If you buy a small one, you know, maybe you're doing small stuff now, but down the road. Um, so anyways, so we're not gonna get into vacuum chambers. That'll be maybe another video. Um, so number one is your prep work. Um, you want to have, if you're using a vacuum chamber, which is the method that I'm showing you, um, I scrub this thing out with really hot soapy water because I actually use this to oil, um, oil stones as well, um, which we can do if anybody wants a video on that, I can show you how to oil stones. Uh, makes a huge difference. Um, but number one, so you're going to take your, um, your slabs and you're going to degrease them. I did a video, um, I actually just posted it on the channel on how to degrease slabs. So you're gonna wanna degrease them really, really good. Once they're degreased, they're washed, they're dried, um, you're gonna put them in acetone, which is what's in there. And uh, once your slabs are sitting in the acetone, that helps get any other oily residues on it. Um, you wanna get yourself a good pair of gloves. And the reason is once you take them out of the acetone, you do not want to touch them, uh, first and foremost. So let me put my gloves on and we'll be right back. Okay, so got a good pair of gloves. Once, I, like I said, once they come out of the acetone, do not touch them with your hands because the oils in your hand is gonna get into the rock. Most rock is porous. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them out of the acetone, just kind of shake them off. You can use a cloth if you want but I found that the little fibers from the cloth can actually get stuck and kind of hang up the resin. And then I just simply set them along. They'll dry fairly quickly. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of line them standing up all the way around so that way the acetone is uh, completely dry before we move on to the next step. So once these are, uh, once these are all done, we'll be back at it. Okay, well, we are back. Um, give me a little side note. I let this acetone dry on here. I actually put this bin. I sort of like propped it up a little bit and put it in front of the fan. And I just left it there and slowly turned it every like couple minutes for about 20 minutes um, just to ensure that they're dry. The one thing with stabilizing is if you're going to get out of it what you put into it. If you, if you take the time and you do it right um, and be methodical about it, you have good results. I know I heard over the years a lot of people say about Opticon this and Opticon that, that there's better stuff out there. And they're very well maybe, but I can tell you this, I've been using this for, since 2000, I think somewhere around in there. Um, a friend of mine, he's an older fellow, my friend Tom, uh, he first turned me on to it back then when I was first getting into lapidary. And uh, this stuff, it works great. It, it really does. And it's cheap, it's effective. Um, it's been used for longer than I've been using it. Um, so I just want to make that a side note that really your preparation is really important. I, uh, I took this, uh, this pot, like I said earlier, the, the uh, vacuum chamber, and I cleaned it out real good. Um, I made sure that my little tubs here are all nice and clean. And uh, so what I'm going to do is this is only the first step. Now, mind you, this is not... Um, heat resistant metal or anything like that. This is only a step for the pressure pot. And I use something this big to try to fit the, the slabs. 
Um, I have a bunch of bottles of Opticon, but you know, trying to get it back in the bottle, you know, it can be a little tough. You got to use a little filter. Um, so what I do is I get something that the slabs are going to easily fit into. Get the Opticon and I pour the sealer or step one, we should say, into here. And I usually just submerge the first one. You may need two bottles. Um, these slabs that I cut, I actually cut these extra thick because a lot of my customers that are cabbers, um, they like cutting high dumps. So I put the first one in, got the second one in, so on and so on and so forth. Put a little bit more. Uh, one thing that you can do, a little pro tip if you, if you want to say, is uh, I've used uh, to bamboo, bamboo skewers already and put bamboo, bamboo skewers between these. Um, now, given the volume, I'm doing what they call as a submersion technique. And there's a reason. It's not just the volume, uh, but two is because I'm using a vacuum chamber. Uh, there's other methods out there where you can take this stuff and you can... Uh, uh, just kind of like brush it on you know that's that's fine if that's what you want to do um, I found by taking the extra time and using a vacuum chamber you're it's going to draw this sealer into all the little cracks and little soft spots of your uh, of your material so much better than just by brushing it on all right so now we're on to the second bottle this bottle I've used for <clears throat> for a number of years, but I think I could probably squeeze this one little guy here. Yeah, I can fit him down in the side. And then what I'll do is I'll just cover this up. You want them so they're fully submerged. Um, if you're doing, obviously, the submersion technique. Alright, so there we go. All right, so now you got your, all your little slabs. They're in here, so now we're gonna go on to the second step. Sorry about my crappy uh, camera work, guys. <laughs> all right, so we'll take our pressure pot. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna walk around the back here, actually. We're going to, I'm gonna keep my rag clean. We're going to take this very gently and I'm going to submerge it. If you notice all the air bubbles there, that's what this guy is for. And gently set it down without spilling it into the vacuum chamber. Put it on. Fire up the vacuum chamber till you get a seal. And there you go, you can see it start rising. And we'll go around back here and I'll show you guys. Um, what we're gonna take this down, we're gonna take it all the way down to the bottom. Now you have to watch with, when you're using a vacuum chamber, <coughs> uh, that your stuff does not boil over. Um, as you're drawing these bubbles out, depending on what you're doing, it can actually foam up. I really should have used a, uh, a deeper cup or used less slabs and done, done two of them. But um, if you notice, though, you see all them bubbles coming up? What that's doing is that's pulling all the air out of the rock. And it's drawing all that resin into the sun, which is exactly what you want to see. We'll go around back here. I'm just trying to keep a real watchful eye. Sorry about the glare from the uh, the light. Maybe we could turn one of the overheads off. There we go. 
So at this stage in the game, at least until I'm all the way fully pressurized, I really, really, really watch uh, what's going on in this. I can't stress how important that is. Um, if it starts bubbling over, hit your bleeder, so you would turn your bleeder, and when you turn this knob, it'll allow air back into the, uh, uh, into the chamber again, and you'll notice your bubbles go vroom. Um, you don't have to turn off your, your compressor, usually. <coughs> and once the gauge is reading, what is it, negative, negative 30 atmospheres, um, which is we're right about where we're at now, um, I'm going to shut this off, and this, this pot now will hold the vacuum. And I'll leave this go. Um, for quite some time, until until all them bubbles are out. Um, once all them bubbles are out, maybe in and out, maybe 10 minutes from now, I'll turn it back on again and kind of cycle through. If I would have uh, been smart and put a, a deeper container in here, which I don't know why I didn't, um, it wouldn't have been as big of a deal. I still could do that, but I'll just have to, you know, watch it a little more closely now because you can see it's right up to the top. And the last thing I want to have is uh, Opticon inside my pot. Um, this, these things, uh, these work great, guys. If, if you guys are doing any kind of lapidary work, um, if you guys are selling lapidary materials and things like that, get yourself a pressure pot or a pressure pot, a, um, a vacuum chamber. I have both. Um, there's methods that you can use that you actually use a pressure pot. Um, now, pressure pots, they use in a lot of like wood stabilizing um, today. However, pressure pots are extremely, extremely, like extremely expensive. They're ridiculous. They're three, four hundred dollars um, for a metal pot. <laughs> I can, and all you do is basically pressurize them with a with a good air compressor. Um, I actually made my own, and uh, I can actually do a video on that possibly if anybody wants to see how to how to make a pressure pot. Um, works as good as the ones that you buy, and I think into it in total. I might have had uh, maybe $150, something like that. So this time, I'm gonna allow a little bit of air in to break some of those bubbles. See, notice that? And I seen my gauge. It looked like a little bit of oil that was in the gauge. Something dripped in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that over to the side. I don't know what that was. It was condensation of some sort. So it actually did bubble over just a little bit, a couple little drops. There we go. And we got a good vacuum. What you do with these, they have these little clip things on the side. I just hold down on it. And all you got to do is hold down on these for, for a second or two. And, uh, and you're good to go. So uh, I'll let this go. I'm not going to sit here and, you know, do this 20-minute uh, long vlog, being like an hour-long video with this. But depending how the bubbles are coming out and how much, you know, how much material you have, how porous it is, so, you know, all the different factors. Um, are going to determine how long this takes. This is not any instructions for the time. This is something that I started doing on my own, and it really, really works. Um, with other stabilizers, things like cactus juice, um, you're definitely what I want to use a, um, a vacuum chamber for it. Um, I like cactus juice, but Opticon's an old favorite. It works. And you can do this with a lot of different rocks. All right, guys, so we'll be back out of here in a little bit. And uh, I'll show you guys on to the next step.
now that the um, uh, the red or the uh, I'm sorry, the part A has been in there, and all the air bubbles are out. Uh, what I'm going to do is I preheated my oven for 150 degrees. Um, now, I actually use a small little convection oven here in the warehouse, and uh, it's dedicated only for um, that sort of stuff. If you're doing it in your home kitchen, guys, just be really careful. Um, you should use ventilation. I know, you know, like people take that for granted, but it's, it's really a serious thing. Um, vapors are not good for you at all. <coughs> Um, so if you're going to do it in your kitchen, you know, just an FYI. Um, down here, we set it up. We actually cracked the uh, bay door open um, while we're doing it, and everything is good. Um, I wanted to mention there is one other method besides the method that I'm using here. Um, if you have a warmer plate that you can adjust the temperature, what you can do is actually put these, instead of putting it in a plastic dish, you could put it in a, in a flat Pyrex dish that'll fit inside whatever will fit inside your vac chamber and you put the warming element underneath it So you are actually warming the resin as you're drawing it out um, I don't know what happened to my warmer plate. It, I don't know. I lost it two years ago um, Probably when we're moving stuff around the shop. So I've been doing this method and it works fine uh, But that's another method. Um, I actually like putting stuff in the convection So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bleed this out then we're gonna take our sheet that we brought out of the convection oven and I'm going to cover this with tin foil just so it doesn't get all gooky and lay down some tin foil around because when once you start pulling the slabs out they're going to drip um you know so just set yourself up a little work here and we'll be right back in a second all right so we got our our little tray I got it covered with tin foil um I kind of position this if you guys look um so because the stuff's going to drip um so I can't stress enough your preparation and then what I do is I just take each one. They kind of like to hang together a little bit. You got to kind of kind of work them apart. My one mistake in doing this is I shouldn't have put uh, this many slabs in such a small container. Um, so I just kind of drip the excess off a little bit. Uh, make sure, you know, guys, that you're using clean gloves. And then I'm going to place them on the tray. You don't want to get all the all the resin off of these, of course, because that's the point to it is to stabilize these. Um, make sure though that whatever you're putting these on is heat resistant. Um, I found that things like tin foil, you know, it really works well. Um, and another thing too is make sure that you have ample uh, ample enough trays. To, uh, to fit all your slabs on. Now, if you're doing rough, you can do the same procedure with rough. Um, I found with rough, though, that cactus juice, it, it really does work good. Um, and there's actually some other stabilizers out there um, that people are using for things like turquoise and stuff. Um, I've stabilized turquoise with this, and uh, I had absolutely no problems. Like I said, I actually, uh, I'm really a fan of, of Opticon. You know, it works. I think a lot of times in our uh, our society today, we have to constantly strive for like the next best thing. But you know, the old things that were sometimes the simplest things are far better than trying to reinvent the wheel with something new. I'm not saying that new things aren't, aren't better, uh, but I'm not saying they are either. So with this, you know, what you like uh, works Opticon. If you don't have a big budget, um, Opticon, I think this runs um, around, I'm going to say, about $10 for the kit. Um, you know, doing a lot of slabs like I'm doing here, I actually have a bunch of bottles of this. Uh, but I would have no less than, than two of the little kits on hand. And you want to just put a little space in there. So there you go. So once you got them, you got them all laid out. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this now... Over to, um, over to our oven that we preheat it once again for 150 degrees. Uh, another thing, guys, have rags handy when you're, 
when you're doing this. Um, if, uh, if guys, if you're doing this in, in your kitchen, your wife's going to kill you if she's not a rock hound. Trust me. Um, unless you have a lot of uh, setup. I'd even advise if you're doing this in your house. <laughs> um, to put something down on the floor. I was really careful, but I still got about a dozen little drips um, on, the on the floor when I was taking my gloves off. Um, this resin's really thick, and uh, it's, it's messy, but it works. All right, guys, so I'll see you over at the oven, and we'll be right back. All right, so we got the buns in the oven, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to push it, push this guy in there, and once again, make sure that you have your stones aren't hanging off the edges where the stuff's going to be dripping or you're going to have a mess. Um, occasionally it does. That's why I use um, this little convection oven. I think I paid, I don't know, I think it was like $175, bucks, um, something like that. And we actually just keep it up on one of the pallet racks here uh, for when we use it. So close it up. I got it set, preset already for uh, 150 degrees. And uh, I'll just set the timer for an hour. And uh, go back and turn the saws on and cut some slabs and then we'll be back. One thing that I wanted to mention, guys. Now, depending on the type of stone that, you, that you're using, um, you may want to actually leave these in. When this shuts off, um, you want to leave these in and let your oven cool down. Um, it's best if you're doing this, like, say, you know, at a mild time at night, a few hours before bed, um, you know, you can set it like I'll set it here before I leave the shop for the night and, uh, we'll actually start filming this in the morning again, once the oven's cooled down. And the reason is you don't want to take this just down to an hour and then quickly open up the oven. Cause what you can do is you can actually end up shocking your stones. Um, and if you shock them, it's not a good thing. It's like, uh, Similar if you would take a, a, a glass and you have really hot water or hot coffee in it and uh, and you put it in cold water right away, it's going to break. Um, you can actually create fractures in your stone um, with anything that you're, that you're heat treating. Um, you know, you should just really let them cool down. So I uh, just wanted to mention that. So we'll be back uh, tomorrow morning here. For you guys, it'll probably be two seconds. And, uh, and we'll go on to the final step. All right. Well, good morning. So it is the next day. Uh, these cooled overnight. You don't really need to, to cool them overnight. I do. I don't want to shock my stones and put cracks in them even further. Um, some of the things that you'll need for the next step is a container or like a piece of plastic um, that you're going to put more of your Part A resin, your first resin that you use to coat those um, in. If you notice, I have a, a little bit in the bottom here. Um, you'll need that. Uh, possibly always good to have a little popsicle stick. And one thing you'll definitely need is a disposable brush and your hardener. Um, so what we're going to do is this piece here is going to be the next piece that they're going to lay on. So I have a little trick that just kind of helps to put that over there. Um, I take these and I just gently lift them up off the tray. Got any goop all over it. Um, then next, take your little brush. Um, don't use a, a you know a uh, a brush that you used for for something else. Because if you get oil on these guys, and there's you know even if it's something you cleaned really good, if there's oil on it, you're just going to contaminate. It. That's the main thing that you want to make sure that um, that you know all your stuff is really really clean. Um, I did want to mention something earlier. That container that I used over there, um, be careful. That can hold acetone in them. I've used them for whatever plastic that's made out of. Um, it works okay. Um, if you use most plastic containers, though, and you put acetone in it, it's a bad day. So I just wanted to see my... So what I do is I take my next little piece here, 
And I should have done this on the first, is on the front and the back, I usually just kind of fold it over a couple times and make a little lift, just in case you have a couple little drips. Um, okay. Then, I'm gonna take what's left on here. If you can see, uh, let's see if we can zoom in there. If you can see, there's not a whole lot left on the on the top. Um, the bottoms, yes, um, not a whole whole lot left on the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the brush to get the excess off of the part A that we put on last night, and then I'm gonna mix up my hardener, and we're gonna put our hardener on. Um, when you're doing this, one thing that you want to remember is you don't want to put a ton of, uh, uh, after you put your hardener in, you don't want to put a whole ton, and in fact, I'm going to set these over on the other tray, um, this guy here. For now, I'm just setting them over there. Let me move that out of the way, actually. <clears throat> Kind of clean it off. You don't have to be real crazy about it, uh, but you don't want to use a whole bunch on here. If you put a whole bunch on, your slab is going to kind of look like I don't know. It's going to look all goopy and, and sloshy, and you know, just not really, really the best. Um, if you have another method for for taking this stuff off. You know, that's fine, whatever works. See, I'm trying to get the camera angle. You see how it's kind of still thick? Um, so I'm actually going to go get a, a little bit different brush and come back. And once this is done, guys, I'll turn the video back on. Okay, one thing I wanted to mention. What you can do is, at this point, you could take a popsicle stick. Sorry about the camera angle there. Um, you could take a popsicle stick and actually scrape this back off. And put it in a container if you want to if you want to uh, reuse it because you can keep reusing this resin um, as long as you keep it clean. So I mean you can see there's a look, there's a fair amount of resin on there. Personally, me I don't care. Um, at this point, I'm just taking a rag and I'm wiping it off. But it is a way that you can save yourself a couple bucks. Uh, if you're going to use a rag, once again, guys, use a very, very, very clean rag. Um, and don't use something that's all friable. Like, basically, uh, you don't want to be using material. Put my brush out of the way here. Um, you don't want to be using some sort of material that's going to leave, like, all kinds of little hairs. You know, little particles um, on your, uh, in, you know, stuck in your resin. Because you're going to see that. I mean, you're going to grind this off anyways. You're going to cut this into cabs. Um, now, these, these will be sold to my customers. And, uh, you know, and they'll do the cutting on them. So, you know, especially I want to make sure that I'm doing a really nice job. Put pride into what you're doing. And, uh, and you have a good product. You get out of it what you put into it. So, you don't want to send a customer something, you know, and it looks like that. <laughs> You have to be careful um, during this step, though. It depends on how, like, how soft your material is. Um, you know, if you're going to wipe it off, because if it's something that's really, really, really soft, um, you're going to want to be real gentle with it. This material this is an agate. Um, it's actually called Purple Passion. It's hard to see in the camera angle here, uh, but it's Purple Passion. It's actually really pretty material. <laughs> it's just that the the matrix. Um, around it has small little, we can call them, yeah, they're sort of like hairlines in them. And the slabs, as you can see, they weren't falling apart when, when I was sawing them. Um, but just as an extra measure, I figured I would stabilize them so we don't have any unhappy customers. You know, once again, you give somebody good product at a good price. And, uh, you know, makes them happy, they make money on it, then you make money on it.
and then they come back. Okay, so we're all done that step. Now the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to put our hardener on, our hardener. Um, what you're going to do is your hardener is going to get mixed eight parts of the part one, which is in the big, the big bottle here. Um, so eight parts, let me zoom back out. Um, eight parts that to one part of your, uh, of your hardener, which is this right here. Um, or it says, I believe it's, no, don't quote me, it's been a while. I, I think it's 50 drops to one half ounce on the other end. All right, so I put my hardener in here. And uh, since I'm going to use the brush to begin with, I'm just going to mix this up because I'm going to use the brush to, uh, to paint it on. Um, when you're done with this step, um, you, they say that you can leave it at room temperature. I, I think it's like 15 minutes. Like I say, guys, it's been a couple years since I've been read directions. Um, this is just the method that I use. It works. Uh, make sure you use a sufficient amount of hardener though. If you don't, um, the pieces will remain tacky. Uh, but they say that at, uh, for 15 minutes, what I do is once these are done and they're, they're done being coated, um, now with the hardener and the, uh, 224, so you're combining the two parts on the second phase, uh, once they're done, I stick them back in the oven on real low, low temperature, um, for roughly about like around a half an hour, uh, give or take. All right, so we're going to take our pieces. And we're just going to give them a nice, pretty coating. Then make sure you do the other side. If you have shaky hands, tremors in your hands like I do, yeah, it's not always not always the easiest. Um, I also suggest that you do the sides, the edges. It's uh, kind of hard bending down in front of the camera here. Let me uh, pull up the chair. <clears throat> okay. So you're going to do this for every single, every single slab. Uh, make sure when you do this step that you brush it on there real pretty, that it's nice. Um, that it's not too globby or anything like that. Um, because this is going to determine how they're going to look at the end. And then I just lay them back on. Go to the next one. Um, if you have cracks and things like that that are in there, make sure that, they, that they're coated. This stuff's real thick like molasses. It might be best actually to do the uh, do the edge first. That's normally what I do. I don't know why I haven't been doing that. Um, so, okay, when these are done, I'm going to put this back. I started saying that. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to put these back in the oven on really low temperature. You do not want to get above 150 degrees. Um, I'm going to put them in for about a half an hour, give or take, and, uh, and bring them out and check them and kind of see where we're at with them. Um, they still may, may be a little bit tacky. Before you do anything with them, I like letting them sit for a day or two um, and just kind of caring. You'll, uh, you'll know. Like I said, the, the main thing is, is that um, make sure that you're using enough hardener. Um, don't overdo it, but make sure that you do because if you don't, they're going to remain tacky. And then that's, you know, that's just a bad day.
There we go, doing this, doing the fronts again. <laughs> Trying to chew gum and, and walk at the same time. Now you don't have to put them back in the uh, in the oven, guys. Um, I would suggest that you do. It just makes it. I don't know. I feel that the the curing process is a little bit better with them. You'll know when you when you get it right. The uh, the point to it, and you'll know if you don't get it right. Uh, but the point to this video. You know, is to help you guys out. Um, I'll periodically, if I feel that it's it's too much on there, um, I'll periodically kind of wipe my brush off again, just like you're painting a wall. If you're good at painting a wall, you're be good at doing Opticon. So we will come back uh, once we're done, because I have to pick it up and uh, and get these done before it starts setting up. All right, so we got them all coated. They're over there in the pan. I know you can't see them too good in the video. Um, so now what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to clean all this junk up. And uh, I'm going to take these over. And uh, I'm going to put these in the oven on warm. And let them sit for about, I'm going to set around a half an hour or so. All right, so we got them back in the oven here. And I uh, just put them on the shelf. Now, if you noticed, again, oh, we got a little problem. So we, we dripped some... Uh, that's why you want to you wanna fold the lips up. Like I said, the first time I didn't do it, you notice I got a drop of uh, part one down there. So I have to go take care of that. That you don't want. And that's why you do this in a, in a separate oven. <laughs> there you go. I did that on purpose. Not. All right, guys. We'll be back once this is done. And uh, I'm done uh, smoking out my warehouse here full of uh, epoxy resin. All right, so it's been uh, about uh, two days, I would say. Um, I let these sit and I let these harden. Now, these are not cracks that you see in it. They're just lips in the epoxy in the, in the top of the stabilizer. So they're not actual, like, cracks in the stone. Um, you notice, if I turn an angle, there's a little bit. You can see a coating like that. Um, you can simply take that on your, on your machine. The, the resin at this point is nice and hard. And if, if you really want to, and you can just sand, you know, sand it off right away, or you just cut out your preforms for your calves, and as you're doming them over, you're done. Um, I put it on a little bit thick. Um, this, this is a nice hard agate, but the matrix was a little bit soft. Um, so there was just like some little pits and stuff like that that I wanted to fill in. Um, you know, I don't want to sell people slabs that, you know, they're going to sit there and fall apart. So I wanted to make sure I used ample amount in here. So <laughs> that's about it at this point. Um, you put these on your trim saw, take them, start cutting them up, and uh, make some really pretty calves out of it. This is actually called Purple Passion. Uh, it is available um, at www.hilmersfineminerals.com, um, or if you if you're with us on Facebook, you can just private message me, um, or we'll have these as well. We do li weekly live sales um, on Facebook. Uh, you can check it out at Hilmers Fine Minerals or Hilmers Fine Minerals on Facebook. Um, one to two days a week, we do live sales, and you can purchase them then. But um, I'll be doing a video on stabilizing for Opticon. Or I'm sorry, this is for Opticon for uh, cactus juice next, and I'll show the process that I use for that. Um, now I use that on both rough and slabs um, for the cactus juice. I find that that it works really good actually uh, for really permeating because it's a little bit thinner. It's actually a lot thinner of a uh, of a resin um, than Opticon. But there's you know each type or each type has their own place. So uh, that video will come out um, shortly. I'm actually, I'm waiting on more cactus juice. I'm, I'm real low, and the pieces that I want to do are actually some rough that I want to do in the videos. Um, so I'm waiting for it to get here. As um, soon as it gets here, I'll do it within a day or so. All right, guys, I thank you so much for watching the Lapidary channel, and you guys have a great day. Take care.